Good morning. Buenos dias. Thank you, Charles. And the 12th. As I walked to this podium to share today's sermon, I had a chuckle. Most of you probably heard the expression, it's a sense of humor. We will get to what the chuckle and God's sense of humor was all about in this case. Uh, but first, let me express that I'm very grateful and honored for the opportunity to share God's word here this morning. I'm full of gratitude and praise to our Lord Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And many thanks for much support to my wife and family, my fellow elders, and especially to our senior pastor here at Mount Vale Church, Pastor Sam Gertz, who is such a good example of a faithful and humble servant. Humble, that's a, a word you're gonna hear a lot this morning. And his wife, Andrea Gertz, we are very blessed to be under their godly leadership. Thank you. I'm also grateful to the Evangelical Free Church of America for being so gracious in inviting me to the EFCA Among All People Summit last week in Aurora, Colorado, an event that included the topic of cross-cultural relationships in the church, which is the focus of this morning's sermon about the Church of Antioch. Uh, now uh, you can figure out what my chuckle <laughs> and God's sense of humor statement was all about. Uh, it was clear to me that this was orchestrated by God. Only God can align things in a way that at first may not make sense to us and make it work for his purpose if we are obedient to his guidance. It all adds up to a confirmation of God's hand in the message he has for all of us this morning. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for loving us first. And thank you that it is not an accident for those of us that are here this morning. I thank you for the brothers and sisters that are eager to step forward for your purpose and for your glory. I ask in the name of Jesus, that you would anoint us and that your spirit be in our midst, that we may be conformed more fully in the image of our blessed Savior and that we would have greater resilience, wisdom, and obedience to your word in us to follow your kingdom purposes. Father, I pray that you will use my voice here this morning. Thank you, Lord, in the name of dear Jesus. And all of God's people say, Amen. Uh, before we continue, please take a minute and just say hello to somebody around you. Yeah, yeah, just take a minute. Uh, those of you online, uh, maybe you could take a minute and give your spouse a big hug <laughs> during this time. So today we continue with the series from the book of Acts on witnesses. Today's message we titled Cross-Cultural Witnesses from Acts 11, 
verses 19 to 30. As we work ourselves uh, to today's passage, uh, let's look at a few things. The church begins her existence as a multicultural community. That is multicultural, multilingual, multinational, and will exist eternally as a multicultural community. We look forward to that day when a multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language will stand before the true king and the lamb. Uh, following, I listed uh, four script scriptures uh, that reference significance of cross-cultural in the Bible. And I will not necessarily read each one, but touch on them. Uh, the first one coming from Matthew 22, 36 to 40, uh, which we know as the Great Commandment. Love God, love your neighbor. By the way, it, it doesn't say love your neighbor if he or she looks like you or if he or she speaks the same language as you or if he or she thinks like you. It simply says love God, love your neighbor. The second scripture uh, coming from Matthew 28, 16 to 20. We know this as the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. All nations does not mean only the, those nations that we feel comfortable with because we have things in common. The next one is Acts 1.8. Uh, this one I will read. Uh, this, if you have the Bible app in your phones, was, by the way, the, the verse of the day yesterday. Again, only God can do these things. <laughs> he was reminding me, yes, 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 keep that. <laughs> Share that one. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Witness to all people, everyone. And the fourth scripture uh, from Revelations 5, 9 to 10, uh, just touching on it, uh, and with your blood you purchase for God, persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. From every tribe and language and people and nation. So let's break up uh, today's scripture uh, passages, um, Acts 11, 19 to 30, into four different sections. The first one, starting in Acts eleven nineteen, 19. The persecution continues. And it reads like this, verse 19. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Here's some background. Jesus came, he died, he rose again. He conquered death. In that gap between his resurrection and the ascension, he spent time with the disciples. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Bartholomew, Judas Matthias, Simon the Zealot, 
and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Sometime later, they were in Jerusalem. They received the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. Peter explained to the crowd what was happening. He told the people they needed to turn away from their own selfish ways and turn to the ways of Jesus. And 3,000 did that on that very same day. Later on in Acts 4, we saw that the church in Jerusalem had grown to 5,000 men and probably closer to 20,000 if we counted the women and the children. That was a huge church in Jerusalem. Then the government and local leaders clamped down on the church. They began to throw people in prison and even murder one of the key leaders, Stephen. The church was scattered all around the world, like Alexandria, Cyprus, Cyrene, and Antioch. And that's where we are right now as we read Acts 11, 19. So these Jews showed up in Antioch and they found people like them who spoke a similar language, had a similar culture and traditions, and they began sharing the good news of Jesus with them. That brings us to our second uh, part. So, but before that, uh, let me make a point on 1119. Uh, actually, two points. Christians face persecution. Persecution can come from anywhere even from our closest friends and relatives. I'm sure some of us have experienced some form of persecution for being a follower of Jesus. Second point, persecution does not stop the spread of the gospel or defeat God. God is more powerful. So going on to the second section, uh, which includes verses 20 and 21, some start witnessing cross-culturally. And starting in verse 20, some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them, the good news about the Lord Jesus. Continuing on verse 21, the Lord's hand was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. So they crossed some ethnic and language boundaries. They went and spoke with people who did not necessarily share the same cultural heritage, the same traditions, the same mother tongue. They began to share the good news of Jesus crossing these barriers. They got out of their comfort zone. Maybe uh, some of us want to get out of that comfort zone. First, they were thrown out of Jerusalem because of the persecution, and then they shared the gospel with the Gentiles. They ended up in Antioch. They talked to people different than them. God did a mighty work in Antioch. Now let's give some background about Antioch. Antioch was a large and ethnically diverse city near modern-day Syria with Roman and Greek influence. It was the third largest city in the Roman Empire. 
Only Rome and Alexandria were larger cities. It had a population that peaked at about 500,000 people. It was a military, governmental, and transportation center. It was filled with immorality and a diversity of religions. Yet, in the midst of that, God raised up a thriving church that became the epicenter of Christianity during the ministry years of the Apostle Paul. The Lord's hand was with them and a great number of people believed. Regular, ordinary people that ended up in Antioch started this church. They began making disciples in Antioch where they were. It became the greatest mission sending church in history. God can use anyone. It means that God can use you, God can use me, God can use any one of us where we are to make disciples as we walk with the Spirit. A key point from these verses, 2021, God wants us to share the gospel with all people, not just with those we feel comfortable with. Here at Mount Vale Church, the Lord has led us to start a Hispanic ministry. We have a Spanish-speaking population around the Mount Vale area that continues to grow rapidly. I never planned to lead a ministry at Mount Vale Church or at any other church, but I have tried to remain obedient and kept my heart open to the Lord's leading. And I believe that he is absolutely using me. The Lord got me in front of you to share this word today. And you know what? He can use you too. My one personal recommendation is remember to pray. Yes, pray. Pray for protection against your own personal pride and selfish ambitions. Yes, usually, regardless of our unique situation, it is us, you, yourself, we, ourselves, who keep us from God using us to do great things for his purpose, for his glory. I often say that I'm a late bloomer in doing God's purpose for my life, but it, it is his timing, not mine. I found out that God's way is always the very best way, all the time. <laughs> After a number of years of the Lord nudging me, finally, in 2021, we officially started the Hispanic ministry here at Mount Vale Church. We have Spanish Sunday school classes, which we are covering uh, John right now, the book of John. We have a Spanish small group, which we're reading a book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. We had membership class in Spanish, from which today we have a few members and about to have another one uh, this coming June. We have a vision of providing English as a second language classes to people that want to learn English 
and Spanish as a second language for people that want to learn Spanish. Amongst other plans here at Mandel Church. In the third section, we cover verses 22 to 26. The Jerusalem church sends Barnabas. Barnabas recruits Saul. And on verse 22 starts like this. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tar Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So what was happening in Antioch? There was no one directing it, guiding it, other than the Holy Spirit. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem. So they decided to send Barnabas to Antioch to find out what in the world was going on in Antioch. Barnabas was called the son of encouragement. He was a leader in the church in Jerusalem. So Barnabas showed up. He showed up in Antioch. When he saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad. They were not exactly sure what God was doing. But he was doing something amazing, and Barnabas was glad. When we do not understand something, we can tend to be skeptical. It could be God doing something that we don't understand and we may not be comfortable with it. Barnabas realized that it was God at work, and he was glad. I pray that we would also recognize when God is at work and have the kind of response as Barnabas did. Barnabas was convinced that this was the beginning of a movement of God. Here at Mount Vale Church, I believe that we are being faithful. So we all should be encouraged and have the attitude of Barnabas. God is building the foundation for something. That's exactly what was happening in Antioch. God was building a launching pad for the church to not rest in Antioch, but to explode both in Antioch and to the surrounding areas and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We pray that the Holy Spirit continues to work in a powerful and mighty way here at Mount Baal Church as well. Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. This is so ironic because if we jump back up to verse 19, now those who had been scattered by the persecution, this persecution that Saul started Let's go, let him, let's go get him and bring him back to Antioch. 
So in a weird way, Saul launched out these people to start the church in Antioch against his will at the time because Saul was still persecuting Christians at that point. But Barnabas realized these people needed shepherding. We need to walk alongside them and not just leave them. We need to not say, okay, they believe in Jesus, great. That's all, folks. No. We need to walk with them and help them walk in a healthy, long-term way to make more disciples, multiple disciples, and invite other people to join and follow the way of Jesus, the way of the truth, the way of life. We need to see this thing to grow in maturity. We need to walk with them, and Barnabas was convinced of that. So Barnabas found Saul, that is, Paul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. And by the way, before Christ followers were called Christians, we can see a reference in Acts 9, 2, where they were called the way. That's right, the way. That was before Saul's conversion to Paul on the road to Damascus. Paul and Barnabas were convinced that we need to walk alongside these people and show them what it means to be a disciple of Jesus and see them multiply in healthy ways. And they did. They were committed and they stayed there for a year. So from these verses, we see that Barnabas and Paul, they led the way. And this brings us to our fourth point. Leaders are needed to help with new ministries. I mentioned the Hispanic ministry here at Montville Church. Looking back at my personal journey, the Lord has been preparing me for a long, long time. Although I still work as an engineer for Verizon, today and have other credentials, uh, uh, I mentioned engineering, uh, business management, education, real estate, and martial arts. I took my first ministry course at Alliance Theological Seminary back in 2001. The Lord was preparing me for 20 plus years into the future, and believe me, I did not have a clue. It wasn't until 10 years later, in 2011 to 2015, when I was blessed with four years of theological studies with the EFCA program of Gateway Theological Institute. We had a, uh, a picture of that group that started uh, in that gateway program. I don't know if uh, we can get that up uh, right now. Uh, here at Mount Bale Church in 2011. And yes, you could see uh, the picture. Uh, you see some familiar faces. Uh, Veronica, uh, Ruth Walker, uh, Pastor Sam in that first row. Uh, I'm in the second row. Uh, was that 13 years ago? A little younger, right? <laughs> All of us. And I believe Pastor Chris Coppola, who was also there, was taking the picture. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Chris. Uh, in 2003, the Lord guided us to start an event, which years later we started calling Bring a Smile to One Child. And we have celebrated it 21 years in a row. Every year since, with families 
from Washington Heights, New York City, where I grew up, and from the northern, from here, the northern New Jersey area. Around 2013, we started engaging day laborers in Spring Valley, New York, an idea that came, up, came from our brother, Rich DiVernado, with uh, coffee, bagels, and Spanish tracks. Some of those families introduced via the Bring a Smile to One Child and or the Spring Valley Day Laborers also had the opportunity to participate in our vacation Bible school and our extravaganza Easter egg hunt events throughout the years here at Bonvale Church. In 2023, meaning last year, independent of our Monvale Church, but we'll mention it because it is also connected to the multicultural work of the Spirit here at Monvale Church. A nonprofit 501c3 organization was officially registered in New Jersey called the Way Foundation, Inc., which today serves as the parent organization of Bring Us March One Tile and of The Way, The Art of Life. The Way, The Art of Life is a way to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth through the martial arts, which I personally have practiced and taught for well over 40 years. And now founded uh, this new art called The Way, which with all the philosophy comes from the Word of God. Did I mention that before being called Christians, Christ followers were called The Way? <laughs> The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, Jesus said in Matthew 9.37. We need more servant leaders to join us. I'm often reminded by my loving wife, Bridget, that I'm Mario, not Super Mario. <laughs> Not Bugs Bunny playing all the positions. Uh, maybe we could get that clip up. Uh, Attention, please. Attention. There's been a slight change in the teetotaler lineup. Catching Bugs Bunny. Left field, Bugs Bunny. Right field, Bugs Bunny. Pitching, Bugs Bunny. Third base, Bugs Bunny. Center field, Bugs Bunny. First base, Bugs Bunny. Shortstop, Bugs Bunny. Second base, Bugs Bunny. My favorite cartoon clip of all time. <laughs> now you could tell I love baseball. Now, that is nice, funny, but we do not want this type of scenario, right? Neither is that realistic. People burn out as a result. Not only do we want you to serve, we also want and need others serving all communities along with us. This past Monday, we had our elders board meeting and we discussed the chapter of delegating, which our brother, Dr. Dave, very well summarized from the book of Spiritual Leadership, which is one of the books that we are reading as a group. Yes, we need to delegate, but uh, to, de to do that, we, we need volunteers to delegate some work to, right? <laughs> to do the Lord's work. So if you or somebody you know has a heart to help in these areas, please contact me or our church office. Uh, we mentioned uh, uh, teaching English, teaching Spanish, 
Uh, we will get to, uh, we also need translators. Uh, we will get to that. Our fourth and last section covering verses 27 to 30 is where the Antioch church sends a gift of money with trusted leaders to help the Jerusalem church during a famine. And starting in verse 27, it reads like this. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a verse, a severe famine, would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples as each was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. We see here ordinary people making an impact for the kingdom, helping others during a famine. If you check historical records, you will see that there was a famine during the reign of Claudius Caesar. That was the second famine during his 13-year reign, uh, and this one happened in 45 AD. AD meaning Anno Domini, uh, which means in the year of the Lord. The, part, the Bible is not just partly true, it is all true. It is the inerrant word of God. So Antioch, which was a larger and richer city with more resources, found out that their brothers and sisters in Judea needed help. So they, they came together and decided to bless their brothers and sisters in Judea. This was the first step towards this amazing mission. Later in Acts 13, they sent out Paul and Barnabas, and then they sent out others. And this church became this mission launching pad where the city itself was transformed and then grew immensely. So our fifth point, Churches should help each other to do God's work, especially people within the church and in other churches. We, of course, need to help when there's a need. We need to absolutely help each other within our church and work with others, other churches as well. Uh, here at Mount Vale Church, as Pastor Sam mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we're going to team up with uh, the church in Rivervale for this year's uh, Vacation Bible School. And we want our Spanish-speaking congregants uh, here at Montville Church to be able to follow and understand the messages in our service. So we are in the process of building a booth and getting translation equipment in place. And in this way, the Spanish congregants that do not understand much English would also get the message on the spot in Spanish. So as we wind up this message, I want to leave you with a closing prayer and three verses uh, that I got last week in Colorado from Carlton Harris, uh, the president of the Evangelical Free Church of America. So the three verses, uh, the first one, James 4.10. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. The second one, 1 Peter 5.5. 5. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders, all of you, 
clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. And the third verse, Philippians 2, 3, do nothing out of self-ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Please join me in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for showing us what you worked through the church at Antioch. And in a similar way, you have been working in the church at Aurora, Colorado, where we held an EFCA Among All People Summit last week. Father, I pray that anyone here today that is struggling and doubting that you can use them, Lord, help them overcome that doubt. Give us confidence, not in our own abilities, but in you as the one almighty God that has sent us your spirit. Help us, Lord, as a church to embrace knowing that our comfort is not our God, but that you are our one true God. We humbly ask you to use us, Lord, as we look forward to that day when a multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language will stand before you. In the mighty name of Jesus, and all of God's people say, Amen. Thank you.